Hi, I'm Jane Reardon of the Illinois Supreme Court Commission on Professionalism. Welcome to Reimagining Law. In this series, we're exploring how legal professionals are adapting their services to better meet the needs of today's consumers. Today, I'm thrilled to have join me Justice Mary Jane Tice of the Illinois Supreme Court. Welcome, Justice Tice. Thanks for joining me. Jane, I, I should tell you, I'm not really in the Illinois Supreme Court courtroom. Um, through the magic of Zoom, which some of us had never heard about until just a few weeks ago, uh, and now we're living on it, um, this is in fact a virtual background of the courtroom uh, of, in Springfield. Uh, and so um, it just seemed appropriate right now that I could uh, be sitting here where I usually sit when I'm uh, uh, here in court, but actually I'm in my bedroom. Well, that is good to know. I'm in my living room. We're all sheltering at home, right? We are five weeks into this emergency situation where we're working from home and the courthouses are closed to everything except emergency. Tell us, Justice Tice, what have you and the Supreme Court justices been doing with your time? Quite a bit. Um, we've been very fortunate that the court has been uh, very nimble we could use that term, uh, in, in adapting to this crisis. And part of the reason we were able to do that is that we have already had in place for every court in our state a continuing operation plan for emergencies. Uh, we also specifically have a pandemic handbook uh, that was prepared about five years ago by the Conference of Chief Judges. And so we already had some groundwork laid uh, to, to figure out how we respond quickly, and, and we have. Um, continue this uh, uh, movement forward uh, every day, every, excuse me, every other day, the members of the Supreme Court meet in a Zoom meeting like this to discuss the issues that are coming so quickly. Uh, on the other day, uh, the leadership of the court system, meaning the chief judges, the clerks of the courts, the trial court administrators, heads of probation and other services, and the members of the Supreme Court, uh, we're up to 63 people. Uh, we meet every other day in a Zoom conversation and try to address the most current issues that are happening um, in that moment in the courtrooms and houses across the state. The state. That collaboration has got to be key for such a um, large court system. Also, Justice Tice, you have been involved in um, judicial education. Uh, tell, tell us how has that been impacted by this emergency and the, the need to provide resources? We know training is key for any professional. Uh, the Illinois Judicial College is dedicated to training not only judges, but other members of the judicial branch, probation officers and clerks and guardians at litem and uh, other members of, of the court system. Um, and that's all, it's been wonderful and very successful. Suddenly, uh, we have uh, stepped up and uh, in this new world, uh, very quickly, the Illinois Judicial College has prepared five webinars mm -hmm. on specific topics uh, such as how to conduct a child custody, a child protection hearing remotely. Um, we know that the, when we talk about emergencies and uh, essential issues, we're worried about orders of protection, we're worried about child protection. How do we do that remotely? So very quickly, the Judicial College has prepared a series of webinars uh, to try to give the tools people need to do their work well in this kind of environment. Sounds like remote access is really the name of this game. Can you talk a little bit more about how the court is looking at remote access and how you'd like attorneys to consider remote access to the courts? We have turned on a dime. We didn't have remote access five weeks ago. And right now, if you have time on your hands, uh, you can go on the Circuit Court of Cook County's website, or YouTube site. And you can watch remote hearings going on in Cook County, in Chicago, our largest uh, population center. All of their hearings are done remotely. Uh, across the state, uh, other circuits are, almost every other circuit, maybe every circuit, has uh, remote hearings as well. They're doing contested hearings. They're doing bench trials. Um, so really, uh, the, the courts, the judges are struggling, but kind of catching up on how to do this. We're thinking deeply about how to do this well. Um, and I think lawyers, of course, need to be thinking about it too. How do you 
um, present a uh, presentation and advocacy, persuasive arguments in this new world. Um, the courts are thinking deeply about it and certainly lawyers need to as well. One of the things that remote access provides is the ability to be present when you're not physically in the courthouse. And talk a little bit about that and what that means for lawyers readjusting their, their planning. There, I think we're all learning. There are some really wonderful things about this technology. So glad to see your face change. Um, so glad to see my grandchildren's faces. Um, but I think the first thing I want to do when this is over is go around and touch everyone uh, and tell them how important they are to me. So we do lose something in this, but we gain something as well. Um, there's some real serious constitutional and legal issues uh, for us using this uh, platform. And we need to think more deeply about it, not more deeply, we continue to think about it. And lawyers need to think about it. Um, just you know, basic ideas of uh, uh, evidentiary issues. What is the record? This recording, is this the record? Can you use this on appeal or not? How do you exchange documents? How do you uh, authenticate documents? There are just many, many, many legal issues that are moving very quickly and that we're all gonna to have to adjust to. And lawyers are gonna to have to be thinking deeply because my sense is when the governor lifts the stay at home order, this is not gonna go away. We're gonna to continue to do remote hearings for a very long time. Remote hearings are going to be held for the first time uh, via Zoom by the Illinois Supreme Court. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and whether the appellate um, courts are also holding uh, arguments remotely? Among the wonderful resources that we've learned uh, to use, the National Center for State Courts uh, has been preparing webinars uh, on all sorts of issues. And on Monday of this week, um, the webinar was about uh, using Zoom and other products um, for oral arguments. And that what we learned was that 24 uh, high courts, Supreme Courts across the country have already used it uh, for oral arguments. Many um, uh, appellate courts have. Uh, to, and, and people are very enthusiastic about how powerful and, and, and efficient it is. Uh, kind of wondering why do we make people travel long distances uh, to, to, to come to a courtroom? Um, the big difference that people talk about is some places have tried to do telephonic communication for oral argument and that doesn't seem to work as well. Uh, here in this new environment, uh, we've learned that it's really important to see each other's faces, get cues from each other. Um, and I would think a lawyer would want to see if their argument is having an impact on the judges. Is the judge responding? The judge not responding. So um, there's some real positive things about what we're doing here. I know our court has had one practice uh, last week and we have another one on Monday. Um, hopefully we can get past uh, uh, technological uh, problems, but I think that's another thing we've all learned. They're gonna be glitches. We're gonna get kicked off. Things are gonna happen, we're not gonna remember to mute. All those things are gonna happen. But uh, in, the, in the big picture, um, this, this platform, this technology is a real helpful uh, tool for our courts during this time and I think in the future. What you shared with me before is summed up by what you just said in that court is not a place, but a service, right? Access to justice. We've been so concerned about self-represented people. What a great tool this is for them to be able to have access to justice. Uh, people have phones. Uh, everyone has phones these days. Uh, they don't have to come to the courthouse. We can deal with their issues today. I was just gonna say, it sounds like the court is thinking even when the, the uh, emergency orders are lifted, remote hearings and access will go on. Am I right? I think there's, yes. I mean, no decisions have been made. We're too much in the moment right now. But, but absolutely, we see that the value of it. Um, specifically, for example, in family cases, we know that um, there's going to be a deluge of cases. We're concerned about orders of protection and family protection issues, but they're gonna be a deluge of cases based on economic changes in families. And um, we're very concerned about modification of child support orders, for example. Uh, we think there are gonna be a lot of them. How do we do that? Well, it can be really helpful to have people come together. About 70% of the cases in a family are self-represented people. Have them in a, in a situation such as this, 
uh, with emotions maybe lowered a little bit because of the technology aspect of it, and be able to address these kind of issues. We think this is going to happen for a long time to come. What are the major considerations for reopening the courthouses when the time is appropriate? Well, first of all, you should know that our courts are working very closely with public health departments. Um, Chief Judge Evans from Cook County has told me that he has three people on his staff whose their specific task right now is to be in touch with uh, the um, uh, various public health um, offices in our area. When we have to go ahead to open up the courts, there are some very serious problems about just the nature of what we do. We've talked a lot about remote access. Um, nowhere in the country has there been a jury trial. And again, big issues in terms of constitutional rights here. So how do we do jury trials? And I think that's what things people are working on as we speak right now. Um, judges today were tasked to measure their courtrooms to see how much room there is so that we could have 12 or 14 jurors come in with six feet between them. Some courtrooms can do it, a lot can't. Uh, we, we, we are really focused right now and thinking about how we can do bench trials this way, but how are we going to handle jury trials? And so um, a lot of energy is going into that issue right now. Thinking big picture, Justice Tice, what do you think the lessons learned for our court system from this COVID-19 virus will be? I think about this a lot. I like to think in the future, and there's a lot we've learned. Um, Courts are not places, they're a service. What we do, what our profession is, is all about serving people who are in crisis. This is what we do, whether it's a financial crisis or today in the world that we live in when there's a health crisis. This is what lawyers and judges do every single day. When we talk about what is essential, and that was a really hard decision to make to begin with, what in our court system is essential and what is not essential. What we walk away from all of this is to realize what we do as lawyers, as in judges, is essential. It's essential to our communities. It's essential to our form of government. Um, it's essential to the people we serve. Um, uh, we should be very proud of how our profession is responding, uh, has always responded, and will continue to respond to meet the needs of the people that we're called upon to serve. Thank you so much, Justice Tice. Your words are very um, confidence building and inspiring. And I really appreciate your joining me today. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we close up? Can't wait to see you, Jane. I want to put my arms around you and hug you. Likewise, likewise. I really think one of the lessons we've all learned in, uh, as a result of this is the value of personal interactions and never taking those for granted. Thank you, Justice Tice, for joining me. And folks, thank you for watching. Please like and share our video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new episodes. Information about staying connected with us is located in the notes. See you next time. In the meantime, be well.